大家好, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Huogu Da Wang. In the last Huawei video I released, I asked if you wanted me to respond to some of these posts people are making, purporting to prove their case against Huawei. Many of you demanded I do just that, and as I am a man of the people, I submit to your will. There are so many of these bogus articles floating around that I would need to do multiple videos to expose them all. But today, I'm going to talk about a couple of articles by a major outlet. Lots of people have added these links in comments and asked my thoughts. Hello, scary looking Bloomberg article. You know, like many of you out there, I've been sucked into this Huawei attack. First, I made a video pointing out the obvious signs that America is trying to further its espionage empire and get a leg up in trade negotiations. That's what this whole Huawei attack is all about. Then I made a second video to give people a different, more encouraging view of the future. Maybe this whole situation will lead to more competition and better products for all of us. But as I admit in the video, I might just be being overly optimistic. The feedback on those videos has been very enlightening. Many people thanked me for presenting a side that they agree with, or just a side that's different than the Western media has been portraying. But there have also been a lot of people posting proof in the form of various articles they found. They have proven a ton of things. No one had a second thought about Huawei until just recently. And now suddenly so many people are certain Huawei should be banned and destroyed. Let's take a look at why. One of the most often posted articles is this one from Bloomberg. People throw this article up and wipe their hands. In their minds, this is the end of the discussion. It definitely proves that Huawei is spying on America, they say. America was innocently minding its own business, and then Huawei came and spied all over it. Okay, let's take a look. Black background. Oh boy, Bloomberg is gonna nail Huawei now. This is serious. Wait, this says China, which normally refers to the government or the people. And here it says Chinese spies. All right, let's see what these Chinese did. Let's find out about this Huawei Chinese government corporation. According to Bloomberg, Amazon was looking to buy a company to help it with its CIA spying program. All right, is this article about America spying then? So long story short, some testers discovered an extra chip on the boards. They panicked because supermicro boards are also used in DoD data centers, CIA drone operations, and other military espionage sectors. An expert named Joe Grant says that this kind of plot actually being true would be, quote, like witnessing a unicorn jumping over a rainbow. Well, that doesn't sound too likely, but Bloomberg says it's true. According to Bloomberg, anonymous people named only as U.S. officials blame the Chinese army for the attack. All right. This is a damn strong accusation. It better have damn strong, verifiable evidence to back it up. Then it says Apple and Amazon were both directly affected by this unicorn jumping over a rainbow. Let's see what they have to say about it. Amazon's reply, quote, it's untrue that AWS knew about a supply chain compromise, an issue with malicious chips or hardware modifications when acquiring Elemental. Apple's reply, on this we can be very clear. Apple has never found malicious chips, hardware manipulations, or vulnerabilities purposely implanted on any server. So then Bloomberg says that 17 people have confirmed with them that the story is totally true. But of course they can't give out their names. You see, six of those people are current or past national security officials, they say, and Bloomberg is very sensitive to people leaking classified information. Oh, wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. So when Edward Snowden revealed US spying, he was a traitor that needed to be prosecuted. But when these six alleged people leak classified information to claim that the Chinese government is spying, which is being used to attack Huawei and further the American agenda, things change. Suddenly now, Bloomberg won't reveal their names. They aren't traitors that need to be prosecuted at all. They're totally trustworthy and reliable, honorable informants. Okay, well, let's go on. Tell me more about this totally unverifiable espionage being done by the Chinese army that every single party involved says isn't happening. 
except some anonymous people, according to you. It goes on to vaguely say that years ago, American intelligence services were reporting that China's spies had plans to introduce malicious microchips into the supply chain. Take a moment to dispassionately think about that statement. If it's true, that means that America is spying on China. It means that they were spying before this happened. Get it? And if it isn't true, it means that they were preparing to launch this story. So in other words, this statement is either evidence that this entire thing didn't even happen at all, or that America was spying first. So then it says, quote, Apple made its discovery of suspicious chips inside Supermicro servers around May 2015 after detecting odd network activity and firmware problems. Did they? Then what is this letter from Apple to Congress that says, quote, a recent report in Bloomberg alleging the compromise of our servers is not true. Bloomberg provided us with no evidence to substantiate their claims and our internal investigations concluded their claims were simply wrong. They were unwilling or unable to provide anything more than vague secondhand accounts. Who is telling you that they did? Quote, according to a person familiar with the timeline. A person familiar with the timeline? A person. Let's take a look at another source. A quote, person who saw digital photos and x-ray images of the chips incorporated into a later report prepared by Amazon's security team. That literally means a person who saw pictures that someone else put into a report. Um, what? Now, not to get all technical on you guys, but there's another thing about this story, which is probably why that one dude said it's so unlikely. Imagine the effort it would take to engineer and deploy these things. Let's see what they actually do, and I'll try to figure out how I would protect my network from them. They were capable of doing two very important things. Telling the device to communicate with one of several anonymous computers elsewhere on the internet that were loaded with more complex code, and... I know you're not tech experts, Bloomberg, but just stop right there. There's no such thing as an anonymous computer. IP blocks are owned and can be tracked down easily. But the point of what you're saying is that these little chips contact servers outside of your network. Woohoo, scary. If only there was some way we could block that. Some kind of wall we could build. A wall of bricks. No, not a wall of bricks. Something better, like maybe a wall of ah, fire. Yes, and, and we shall call that a fire wall. You know, the thing installed on every network everywhere, especially in data centers and government buildings. Does Bloomberg think that if I walked up to a CIA computer and logged in, I could browse the internet? Hell, even in the major motion picture visual effects industry, you can't do that. So this all seems like an awful lot of effort to build something that definitely wouldn't work in any kind of network set up by even a moderately competent admin. Then the article goes on to give the dumbest, noobest example imaginable. Quote, Somewhere in the Linux operating system, which runs in many servers, is code that authorizes a user by verifying a typed password against a stored encrypted one. An implanted chip can alter part of that code so the server won't check for a password. And presto, a secure machine is open to any and all users. First of all, operating systems don't run in a server. They run on a server. And if you make a chip that, as you say, bypasses PAM for logins on a Linux machine, how are you going to actually log into it? You gonna magically bypass the firewalls? The only way you could log in after doing that is if you were physically in the data center, in which case you wouldn't need the damn chips in the first place. Is this what you're saying, Bloomberg, that the Chinese army is preparing a land invasion of America to log into computers? Then it goes on to say things like, quote, unlike software-based attacks, hardware manipulation creates a real-world trail. Software-based hacks also leave real-world trails. Just search for the words hacker caught to find proof of that. I won't go into every detail about how stupid the technical claims of this article are because someone else already debunked it. If you're a technical person, let me send you to this article which exposes the deeper reasons that Bloomberg's claims are bogus from a technical point of view. In short, it points out things like how the article claims that the chip was meant to make the BMC connect to anonymous servers, which is stupid because no actual company's BMC has internet access. VLAN segmented IPMI subnets are standard in every company everywhere. 
or like how Bloomberg talks about how the chip gives attackers access to, quote, the most sensitive code, even on machines that are off, which is actually literally impossible. Anyway, there's a lot more. So if you're a tech person, go read that too. So then it describes how they supposedly found out about these dirty, dirty spires. Let's see, to catch these people spying, the US spy agencies used communication intercepts, which they already had in place, informants in Taiwan and the rest of China, which were already there, and tracked people in China using their phones. That's right, to prove to you that China is a big bad spy company, America used its vast spying network to continue spying its ass off on the Chinese citizens. They spied on Chinese citizens, and get this, they supposedly witnessed people who claimed to represent Supermicro or the Chinese government approach manufacturers. In other words, they have no idea who these people were. Of course, we're just supposed to assume that their claim about being someone from Supermicro is totally false, while the claim about being someone from the Chinese government is completely true. But in reality, we have no idea where these alleged people were from, or even if they were Chinese. It's impossible for someone to lie, according to Bloomberg's crack team. And again, all of this is Bloomberg telling us that someone told them that they were told a person said something. They supposedly observed bribes, threats, meetings, even the specific requests being made between everyone involved. Let us put these chips on your motherboards. Just think what a goddamn elaborate spying network America would have to have to observe every single detail of hundreds of people all communicating in secret over emails, chats, telephones, and in person in China. Just think about the massive spying network they would have to have for that. Then two people briefed on the activities, which again literally means nothing at all, said that this was all caused by the PLA. I repeat, two people who have been told by someone that it was all the PLA have told Bloomberg it was all the PLA and done. Now it's a fact. But what does any of this even have to do with Huawei in the first place? Oh, here it is, a random mention that there have been warnings about Huawei. I already addressed most of those warnings in my first Huawei video. Not only was there no evidence for those warnings, when the USA, Canada, and Germany checked Huawei's code, they suggested the warnings were completely unfounded. So why are people posting this article? Then the article reduces itself to using sources referred to as people with knowledge of AWS operations. And I'm not making this up here. This source is referred to as the person. Then it goes on to say, quote, China has long been known to monitor banks, manufacturers, and ordinary citizens on its own soil. Yeah, so has every other country. You know what countries have been known to monitor these things even longer than China? America, the UK, the rest of Western Europe, Australia. So what does this clause even mean? Why frame it this way? Well, because you don't want people to see things in a balanced way. You want them to think China is a country that could so easily start spying on American citizens. But, and I really hope you can track with me here, guys, this article doesn't even show that. So far, this article has used anonymous sources to claim that some people said that they were with Supermicro or the Chinese government, and those people supposedly planted these computer chips that no one anywhere has confirmed even exist. That's a weak conspiracy theory. And again, no one is saying it's true except Bloomberg. Here's more of what Apple had to say about it. Quote, our best guess is that they are confusing their story with a previously reported 2016 incident in which we discovered an infected driver on a single Supermicro server. That one-time event was determined to be accidental and not a targeted attack against Apple. And here's what Supermicro said, quote, Supermicro has never found any malicious chips nor been informed by any customer that such chips have been found. But interestingly, this article also claims that America has an extremely vast spying network which is monitoring Chinese citizens directly. They are literally claiming that China is trying to spy and that America is actually spying. I have to stress, this is what people are trying to show as definitive proof. Look at this part here. Quote, according to someone who was present, Defense Department officials briefed the technologists on a recent attack. Attendees weren't told the name of the hardware maker, but it was clear to at least some in the room that it was Supermicro, the person says. 
Let me translate that for you. Bloomberg says that someone told them that they were in a meeting with the DOD. And in that meeting, the DOD said that there had been an attack, but didn't give any details. But the person who was telling Bloomberg about this thought that it was clear that other people there thought that it was super micro that they were talking about. This is reporting? Am I supposed to be impressed by this? And just to top it off at the very end of the article, they even tell you that Bloomberg itself uses Supermicro and they didn't find any chips either. <laughs> oh, and that's it. That's the entire report. It had literally nothing to do with Huawei. It was evidence that some anonymous people told Bloomberg that America is spying its ass off and that someone somewhere said they were in the government or Supermicro and added ineffective chips to motherboards. And we should believe Bloomberg, even though Apple, Supermicro, Amazon, the US government, and the Chinese government have all been silent or outright denied it. Why should we believe Bloomberg? Well, because they are always accurate and they're portraying the situation accurately as they always do, that's why. And that brings me to another commonly posted article by Bloomberg. Here we go, guys. This is proof that Huawei is loading backdoors into the network. They are ready to take over the world. Bloomberg! Vodafone found hidden backdoors in Huawei equipment. Oh, damn, guys. I guess Bloomberg has finally provided that proof that Huawei is an evil hacker company. Quote, Huawei had unauthorized access to millions of Italian homes and businesses, according to Vodafone security briefing documents from 2009 and 2011, seen by Bloomberg as well as people involved in the situation. Bloomberg and People saw some reports and realized the truth. Huawei is spying on millions of people. April 30th, 2019 will go down in infamy as the day we discovered the truth. Thanks to the Honorable Bloomberg. That's the date I was proven wrong about Huawei. I'm really, really sorry, guys. It appears that I was wrong. On April 30th, 2019, Bloomberg proved that Vodafone had found hidden backdoors in Huawei equipment. What, what is this? Vodafone denied the report. That's right, everyone. Bloomberg apparently doesn't even know what Telnet is, one of the most basic things in computing ever. Kind of important to understand computers if you're going to be reporting on them. But wait, if Vodafone said it's not true, then why does Bloomberg still have the article up? Yes, it's still up, even though it's been completely debunked. But yeah, we're the crazy ones for questioning these wild claims. All right, I don't know how else to get through to you. So how about this? Here's another article written by the same two guys that wrote the Supermicro article. It relied almost entirely on anonymous sources and was never confirmed or verified. It came out later that the story was false, but it's still up. Still not convinced? Here are the reactions to the Bloomberg Supermicro story by the actual people listed in the article itself. Joe Grant tweeted, my quote was given over a year ago. I've not seen any proof of this alleged attack. Joe Fitzpatrick, source of the tech details on how the chips work, said this about the article on a podcast called Risky Business. Quote, all the details that were even remotely technical seemed like they had been lifted from the conversations I had about theoretically how hardware implants worked. So we have an article written by people who have also penned disproven articles in the past. The article is based on anonymous sources and name sources. The name sources have spoken out against the article. Every company involved said the article wasn't true, and a few of them have complained quite loudly that the story was a hoax. From a practicality point of view, this would be a hugely massive amount of effort to build into a chip that would be useless in even the most simple of networks. From a technical point of view, the claims Bloomberg made are actually impossible, not to mention they were copied from an irrelevant conversation. And most importantly, there is no evidence that any of this happened at all, and plenty of evidence that it was completely made up. I normally just let people believe whatever they want, but when it comes to China or anything else that I love, I try to keep the conversations balanced. With so much negativity out there, it's absolutely critical that you and I provide some positivity to balance things out. I am perfectly willing to accept Huawei and the Chinese government are the evil ones perpetrating a worldwide hacking campaign through super advanced chips that break the laws of physics. I'm absolutely ready for it. All I need is some proof. Otherwise, it's just a conspiracy theory. 
The airplanes used in the 9-11 attacks weren't holograms. Bigfoot isn't running an Illuminati network, and Huawei isn't hacking the world. When somebody actually has real proof of these, let me know. Until then, I want you all to read very critically the information you're being fed, because extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, not anonymous hearsay and refuted articles. But this is a dangerous game we're playing. There are a lot of people who need to believe these things because attacking China or attacking Asia is what gives them their purpose. Finding out that they've been heavily investing into conspiracy theories can be damaging to people's psyche. But I'll do it. I'll tear down their conspiracies one by one if that's what you want. There are a lot more angles to the story that are ridiculous. So let me know if you guys want more about Huawei. So now you know what I see when I read these comments. Often a scary looking article, obviously written by people who don't understand the subject, and all the while never a kind word for Chinese people. Why do people believe in this garbage? Thanks everyone. See ya.